I've got the SEX6 right here. So for this video, we're gonna open it up, dig into this thing and see what makes it move. We're getting to the table right now. Take a look. If you're interested in this thing, then you already know the size of it. So just real quick, that's the Proline Cliffhanger body. Um, it's huge, 25 pounds or so. Um, we're gonna dig into it, get under the body, which that's one of the issues I wanted to cover. Uh, some of the guys are talking about the bodies are breaking right up through there. I've seen a few that are busted back here. So I'm not sure how much I'm gonna abuse this body, but I'll probably mention it a few times. This is probably gonna get everything Vitavon makes. So get ready for that. Anyway, body's coming off. It reminds me a bit of the 10-3. Obviously it's got a much different layout. I mean, uh, yeah. Pretty big, it's got the same half motor cover, except that's over the ESC now. The servo, this is one of those issues that everybody's complaining about, and I've seen some of uh, stripped gears. Uh, the servo is trying to do its thing. You've got a lot of side shift in the front axle. When I get this thing powered up, we'll probably check into that a little bit as well. Uh, the drive shafts are out of phase. Uh, some guys have, have complained that this right here is a little bit too wobbly. Well, I mean, it doesn't really have to be super strong just to shift the transmission, does it? Now, I'm looking at down here and up here, so there's definitely some kind of oil in the transmission. That's a good thing. Um, we can run two batteries, probably in parallel, to really double up on the run time. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get this thing powered up and see if it even works. The transmitter is a DX3, which is pretty much standard issue. This is going to be your uh, two-speed right here. So I like that it already has a little thumb thing on it so I can drive normally. And I found an old 5200 milliamp battery. Um, it's at storage charge, but it should be fine to power this thing up on the table. Uh, I'm going to just use my adapter. One day I'm just going to have to buy some batteries for this thing, like some legit Spectrum batteries. One day. So let's go ahead and power this thing up and see if it works. Okay, it is ready to go. The on-off button is underneath here, like there. There we go. Radio is on. I don't have the right battery, so I'm not showing anything there. For this particular size of a truck, I kind of think the Spectrum batteries and the Smart feature would actually be a good thing. Um, It turns, let's give it a little bit of drive. All right. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can see what they were talking about with that flexing, so. But some of that flex could also act kind of like a servo saver, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go and check into this steering a little bit more. Let's see what we can see here. I'm checking for side to side movement. Let's see. Watch the chassis in relation to the axle here. See how that bumper's moving over? And so that tells me that there's definitely some side-to-side -side travel, and that can pretty much make any servo look bad. Need to tighten up the servo. That's easy. And you're supposed to go through the bolts anyway, right? All right, so while I'm tightening up the servo, I'm going to pull this off, and we're going to get a look at that ESC. Let's go ahead and get this off. Holy moly, that is a much smaller ESC than what I had anticipated. Wow. Okay, side by side. Now, granted, this is up higher, so we may have a little bit of effect on that. But the new ESC looks to be maybe a tiny, tiny bit bigger than the Hobbywing Axe. This is the R2 system right here. Wow, that is, uh, I don't know, I expected a larger ESC. In case you're wondering, that same R2 ESC is now plugged into this motor. 
So now this ESC is only rated a 3S. This one is technically rated a 4S, even though some guys have claimed that they've already messed it up on 4S. I just thought of something that I should point out. When you set these up, you actually have to set them up to the motor through the Bluetooth in these. These right here, as I understand it, need the little uh, program card. But uh, you actually have to set the ESC up for the KV of the motor so it'll run it correctly. So that may hurt the uh, chances of ESC swapping, right? Now it's time to get into this transmission. Big bad motor, um, all Mod 1 gears inside. Really looking forward to seeing what's in here. Um, Got to get this thing out. I know the clutch has come loose on quite a few of them as far as what I've seen. So I'll get that tightened up. But let's see what's in this thing. Here. Well, that's a different kind of grease. That's almost more like a fluid oil. Hopefully it didn't make it to the clutch pads, but that's neat. And it also explains why that right there and this up here is a little bit on the sticky side. That's neat right there. I like that. Like a big oyster, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but nah, not really. That stuff, this stuff should be better, right? <laughs> well, taking the brace loose, you may as well take the motor cover back apart and... So I'm going to probably use this video to make sure I put those back in the correct spot. I'm just simply going to take the entire motor completely out. Um, let's see here. Just pop these right out. This is a big motor to only have four millimeter plugs. Huh. And I'll get this pop loose and the motor should come right out. All right, let's get this thing up out now. There we go. Big motor, don't have a five millimeter shaft as well. So basically what they've done here is you've got a big block motor to help with the duty cycle. And the duty cycle, a, a bigger duty cycle, that sounds funny, I know, but um, it allows the motor to run the vehicle. It's 25 pounds or so. Um, it allows it to run it for longer without overheating it. You can put a smaller motor in it. Um, probably not with that bolt pattern you're probably not going to fit most normal size motors in it and I don't really think you want to now what I would like to see and I know some of you guys out there are crazy enough to do this you can move all this stuff out of the way and I'm pretty sure you can probably fit like a 56 113 something like that you know maybe a big old castle 1100 then you get 8s then you'd really find out what's going to break <laughs> but for me I really think this is going to be plenty I mean, I got plenty of room to up it or down it on the pinion. Um, should be pretty simple. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the servo wire or the servo loose and all that and remove the entire transmission. To get the servo out, this little guy right here is plastic and it has a hex. You're going to need this side of your four-way wrench and a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench to take it loose from the bottom side. That's a little bit of an odd way to do this, but you know what? The servo is loose. Now I get to take the drive shafts out, and uh, this big honking thing is coming out. This is a monster beast of a transmission. <laughs> Holy moly. This thing is beefy. Woo. I like the snot in there. There we go, and it does look like there is a little bit of a uh, snot has got onto the uh, clutch. I'm going to clean all this out, take the clutch completely loose, clean that up, and retighten it. Without a doubt, that nut was loose, but the pads look clean. They don't look like there's any oil on the pads. Um, hopefully not. So, um, yeah, doing good. Before I tear into this anymore... I want to show you guys something. That's a normal three gear transmission, like what we use in our crawlers and that's what comes in your SMT trucks. Yeah, big difference. I'm gonna start by taking out the front bolts. See if we can pull the front off of this and get a good peek inside. This is your input shaft right here. It goes all the way to the back. Here we go, let's get a good peek inside. I'm going to go ahead and open up the back side as well, but I'm going to put the front side back on, and there is snot all over the place. Very good stuff. I haven't tasted it yet, and I don't want to. 
there are a lot of gears in here, guys. So your input from your spur gear is right here. It goes through this counter gear into this one, then that drives your two speed, which is this unit down in here. So you can see right here, this is pretty much your low gear. This is your rear drive shaft output. Your front drive shaft output is over there. All right, so then you go into high gear. If I can get that in there, look at how much faster everything goes. So that is your low and high speed gears in the transmission. And unless I actually have a problem with this, or if you know Vitavon happens to make an entire transmission case for this, I'm not going any further. And there we are. This gigantic monster beast is ready to go. There is a lot going on in this transmission, let me tell you guys. A lot. Now, Vitavon already has these pieces out right here. I'm expecting an entirely new skid. He's got that brace I took out there, this. He's got the shock mounts. He's got axle housings coming. Uh, the front's done. The back should be done soon. Beadlock wheels. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that while I clean out the snot from the belly. <laughs> just another size comparison. That is the sixes drive shaft. This is a normal SEX, like the Wild Boar 8. And this is a uh, rift joint right there. So, yeah, lots of beef. You know what? We haven't looked at these lights yet. Let's check those out. <laughs> they look really nice. <laughs> Tail lights look good too. Now, before I wrap this up, I do want to mention these shocks. If these shocks prove to be leak free and all that, they are plenty beefy. They seem to be nice and smooth. Those will probably be used on other vehicles in all honesty. The spring rates are nice and uh, nice and progressive. So uh, yeah, now it does have 17 millimeter hexes. It takes a 10 millimeter uh, socket wrench to get the uh, wheel nut off, a 10 millimeter. As far as the axles go, I'll probably tear into those at a later date. But uh, yeah, awesome. There we go. We really got to dig into that transmission. Uh, my slipper clutch nut was actually pretty darn loose. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, fall off nut loose, but it was kind of loose. I got to tighten back up. Plus, we got to get, we got to dig into that transmission a little bit. There's a lot going on in there. It's a big, massive transmission. Everything looks beefy inside. So that's a great thing. Um, got to look at a few other things. The body, you know, crack issue, which obviously I don't have that yet. Steering, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of side shift on that front axle. So as the axle side shifts to the left and you try to turn to the left, you're going to have less effective steering. Uh, the servo could be going all the way, but if the axle travels with it, you're not going to get that much turn. So uh, that can be fixed with uh, braces, which we have to come up with, or like I'm going to be doing the full bit of on the Vitavon shock towers right here with the Panhard mount, metal, the metal front housing, which is obviously not going to flex. So, yeah, lots of things to do to this. There's going to be so much Vitavon on this thing, it's going to be 45 pounds. Guys, I got to get this thing outside, take it for a drive. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Guys, in that description, I will link this. I believe they're all sold out. I believe they're on pre-order, but um, I'll do my best to link you up some stuff. Check that description. Use those links. They are affiliate links. A main eBay, Amazon, and Horizon. Uh, they help out the channel when you guys use them. So guys, check that description. Use those links. Make sure you're subscribed. And thank you all for watching. Guys, if you like what you see, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. So in the description, there's a link to become a channel member. If you want to become a channel member, it's a very simple $2, $5, $10, or if you really got some money, $25 a month. It's a simple way to support the channel. So get that, and I am doing monthly giveaways for members only, so you might want to consider it. So guys, use those links. Make sure you're subscribed. Thank you all for watching.